Does COVID-19 cause multiple sclerosis? Well, the disease has been reported to damage the blood-brain barrier, and according to this widely reported observational study, there's a more than double increased risk of MS diagnosis after severe COVID-19. Let's look at the data. This is an observational study from Sweden with close to 10 million participants, ages 3 to 100, and it was from the time period January 2020 to November 2022. They excluded people who had existing demyelinating diseases such as MS, which makes sense because they're looking at people who got COVID or didn't get COVID and or got hospitalized with COVID and did they get diagnosed with MS or another autoimmune disease of the nervous system after that and compared the rates. So the outcomes were a new diagnosis of MS after getting COVID-19 or not getting COVID-19 or getting hospitalized with COVID-19, and there were 2,787 new diagnoses of multiple sclerosis, and they looked at other autoimmune diseases of the nervous system, such as acute disseminated encephalomyelitis, and there were 1,139 instances of that after the exposure or non-exposure. And of course, they're confounders. For instance, men are more likely to get hospitalized with COVID, but less likely to get MS. So they tried to correct for gender, but also comorbidities with the Charlson Comorbidity Index, looking at things like diabetes, hypertension, chronic kidney disease, age, and also region of birth. But there are a few other potential confounders. More on that later. They have some interesting data based on baseline characteristics. For instance, this looks at age from 3 to 10 all the way up to 91 to 100. Some people were not diagnosed at all. The middle column is a positive test, but no hospitalization and on the right people hospitalized due to COVID-19. You can see in the youngest group, 3 to 10, only 0.38% were hospitalized, 794 versus over 200,000 with positive tests. This is not the infection hospitalization rate, which could be lower. There could be other people with mild illnesses who didn't get tested. Tested, but at age 81 to 90, it was 33.5% were hospitalized with infection. Of course, this is very well known. Men also had it worse with 5.4% hospitalized versus only 3.8% of women. Of course, the majority of people were not diagnosed with COVID at all. Of course, they may have gotten COVID, but they never took a test. Now, they excluded people with existing diseases like multiple sclerosis, though those individuals seem to have greater risk of hospitalization 14.8% getting hospitalized versus only 4.5% without. Now, it's thought that people with diseases like multiple sclerosis are not immunosuppressed, but of course, immunosuppressant medications are used to treat these diseases, and they are, of course, more susceptible to severe COVID-19. That's very well known. So here's a potential confounder. There could be other factors aside from immunosuppression driving this effect. So I'll offer my critiques later, but first I'll just show you the data. So this is is multiple sclerosis diagnosis after COVID-19 infection. So the top row are people who were not diagnosed with COVID of any form. In the middle are people who had a positive test, they had COVID but were not hospitalized. And on the bottom is people with hospital admission. So people who were not diagnosed there were 2,403 diagnoses of MS later on out of about 10 million people. Now, people who had a positive test only, it was 356 instances of MS diagnosis out of about 2 million people. And you can see there was a rate ratio of 1.3, so it was a little bit more likely, but not statistically significant, especially once adjusting for confounders, the right column. And at the very bottom, hospital admission with COVID-19, not incidental diagnosis of COVID-19, but due to COVID-19 infection causing the hospitalization, according to the authors, there were 28 diagnoses of MS out of about 100,000 and if you do the calculation, that's a rate ratio of 2.28, so greater than double risk of multiple sclerosis. And if you adjust for the confounders, it makes things worse. Now the odds ratio is 2.48, about two and a half times greater chance of MS diagnosis. And that makes sense because one of the big factors is gender with more men being hospitalized with COVID, but women having roughly double the risk of multiple sclerosis in general. So people getting hospitalized with COVID because they're mostly men should get 
less multiple sclerosis than the general population, but they actually don't. So there's something here. But interestingly, existing medical conditions didn't really correlate with future MS diagnosis. This again is the Charlson comorbidity index. Higher score means more existing medical conditions like hypertension, diabetes, etc. Zero means the healthiest, three or more means the sickest. And you can see the middle group, Charlson comorbidity index of two, was associated with more MS diagnosis diagnosis, but the sickest people, three or more, actually had a lower rate, odds ratio 0.84, in other words, 16% reduced risk of multiple sclerosis diagnosis. So this looks like random noise. Let's move to other demyelinating diseases other than multiple sclerosis. Here's a list of the conditions they included. Some of these are well known to occur after various viral infections, such as acute disseminated encephalomyelitis or transverse myelitis. Some of these are a little bit dubious. For instance, clinically isolated syndrome. I won't get into the technicalities. Most people with this diagnosis would now meet the modern diagnostic criteria for multiple sclerosis, so they essentially just have MS. Also, Baylor's concentric sclerosis is widely regarded to be a form of multiple sclerosis. There's quite good evidence for this. Also, some of these conditions are not exactly inflammatory demyelinating diseases, like central pontine myelinolysis. This is osmotic demyelination that could occur due to complications of COVID-19 and hospitalization, like having changes in sodium levels, things like that. They really shouldn't have included it. The same thing with central demyelination of the corpus callosum. I'm not sure what they're talking about. Maybe something like Marchiafava bignami syndrome, or maybe cytotoxic lesions of the splenium of the corpus callosum. Again, these are not really widely regarded to be inflammatory diseases. So take this analysis with a grain of salt. They did report that with hospitalization due to COVID, it was associated with a greater rate of future diagnosis of these conditions with an odds ratio of 2.3, roughly the same corrected for confounders, 2.36. So greater than double the risk of these conditions after severe COVID-19 leading to hospitalization. But with the weird mixing of different types of diagnosis, I wouldn't make too much of this. So let's get into some other data and my critiques of the study. One thing is the media the median age of MS diagnosis after COVID-19 hospitalization was 56.7 years. This is very old. The overall median age of diagnosis of MS in the general population is 30. So almost double that in this study, at least people who were hospitalized with COVID. But that makes sense because there aren't a lot of 30-year-olds getting hospitalized with COVID in general. The range was 15.9, which is a normal age to get diagnosed with MS, up to 89.9. That's very old to be diagnosed with MS. I believe older than any patient has been diagnosed with MS by me or some other neurologist prior to seeing me in my entire career. It's extremely old, not saying that it's impossible. The median time from admission to the hospital to MS diagnosis was very short, only 82 days within three months. So this is all happening very quickly. And of course, you have to have symptoms prior to diagnosis. It often takes time to have symptoms, have MRI scans, possibly have a spinal tap to see a neurologist to get a formal diagnosis of MS. So it's happening almost immediately. Only one in five of these MS diagnoses were occurring more than a year after getting COVID-19. And that's kind of strange because other evidence suggests that one, the physiologic onset of MS may occur years prior to symptom onset and diagnosis. There are people with so-called radiologically isolated syndrome. They have an MRI for another reason, like a head injury. They have MRI lesions that look distinctively typical of MS, but they don't actually develop symptoms of MS until many years later. Also, a lot of the risk factors for MS diagnosis occur early in life, even though symptom onset and diagnosis is much later. For instance, Epstein-Barr virus infection, most people are infected by age six. When people look at migration studies, your risk of MS is primarily determined by where you live prior to age 15. Where you live after that seems to be unimportant. So we think risk factors early in life, like diet, viral exposure, hygiene perhaps, are related to multiple sclerosis diagnosis years or decades, not something that occurred immediately before. Some autoimmune diseases like transverse myelitis, Guillain-Barre syndrome, acute disseminated encephalomyelitis, they may be different. They may be triggered right before the clinical onset, but multiple sclerosis seems to be a much different disease. So it's unusual to have this cluster right after an exposure. 
Also, the actual absolute rate of cases of MS was very low. In the entire study, there were only 2,787 new diagnoses of MS out of about 10 million people. That's one in 3,574 in the United States and Sweden, the background rate is around 1 in 350 to 1 in 500. So we're talking about less than or roughly one-tenth of the background rate. So just not that many people getting MS. And of course, most of these people never got COVID, even minor COVID. What if we look at any form of COVID, not just hospitalization, but even a positive test? There were only 384 new diagnoses of MS out of 10 million, or one in 25,000. Trivial compared to your background, just general risk of getting multiple sclerosis. What about what this study is talking about? People who were hospitalized with COVID and then got MS, that's only 28 people or 28 in 10 million or one in 355,000. Again, this is roughly 0.1% of your just general background risk of multiple sclerosis. We're talking very small numbers in absolute terms. There are some other issues. One is a pseudo exacerbation phenomenon. In other words, severe illness or fever can kind of bring out existing symptoms of multiple sclerosis that weren't previously obvious, even though it's not exactly causing the symptoms. For example, I have a patient who went to the hospital with fever and was diagnosed with endocarditis, infection of the heart valve. He was treated with antibiotics, but during that hospitalization, he was no noted to be extremely weak and had difficulty walking. When examining him, I found that he had obvious signs of spinal cord injury. Subsequent MRI scans revealed that he had lesions typical of multiple sclerosis, and I made that diagnosis. Of course, the lesion looked old and chronic on MRI, so he had multiple sclerosis before, but maybe the symptoms were subtle, or maybe a doctor had previously not diagnosed multiple sclerosis, but now the fever brought out the symptoms, made them worse, but it's not like endocarditis caused him to have multiple sclerosis. This is extremely well known. The authors of the study seem to be not familiar with this particular phenomenon. There's also a surveillance phenomenon. When you see doctors, you get more diagnosis. You go to the hospital with COVID-19 pneumonia, they put you on a scale and they say you have obesity. They take your blood, they say you have type 2 diabetes. They check your blood pressure, they say you have hypertension. Everything gets diagnosed a little bit more when you're actually seeing doctors. Perhaps there are people who had obvious signs of multiple sclerosis, but they weren't that severe. They weren't seeing doctors. Maybe they just had that type of personality. They didn't want to complain about something, or they thought it was due to something else like arthritis or another orthopedic injury. Another thing is that time of diagnosis is not time of disease or symptom onset. So someone gets diagnosed with multiple sclerosis two months after being hospitalized with COVID. Well, let's say they say, yeah, I had optic neuritis five years ago, or two years ago, I had this symptom of tingling that went up to my chest and it went away after a few months. I was about to see a doctor, but it went away spontaneously. Well, that person had multiple sclerosis prior to getting COVID-19. Hence, COVID-19 definitely did not cause them to get multiple sclerosis, but somehow in this study, it doesn't account for that. It just presumes that if you were diagnosed after COVID-19, that it started after COVID-19. I don't believe that's the case. And of course, in my opinion, as I expressed before, there's very strong evidence that the physiologic onset of MS is usually long before symptom onset. And as mentioned previously, the absolute number of MS diagnoses after COVID-19 hospitalization is extremely low and would only account for a tiny proportion of the background general risk of getting multiple sclerosis. So I'm not trying to criticize the researchers. This is a good study. It's beautiful data. I credit them for the hard work necessary to obtain it and present it to us. And they do address some of my objections in the discussion section. It's really more the way the study is being reported by other aspects of the media. Essentially, I would come to the exact opposite conclusion. I think from this study and several other similar observational studies, I think we can safely conclude that people who get COVID-19 do not seem to have an increased future risk of multiple sclerosis. Of course, there are many case reports of people getting MS shortly 
after COVID-19 infection, whether it's mild or not, but that's going to occur naturally by random chance. We can say that observationally, we see a cluster of diagnoses after severe COVID-19, but that's likely due to other phenomenon as I discussed in this video. Let me know if you agree with my conclusion. Have you got COVID-19? Did you get an MS diagnosis shortly afterwards? Did it cause a temporary worsening of symptoms, a pseudo exacerbation, which of course is common and very well known in MS? And let me know if you have suggestions for other videos.